Hey, this is Ben Tate for CG Tuts, and in this quick tip, we're going to be looking at how uh, to render a wireframe over top of a model, okay, in Max. And something similar to this, which is another model that I have, uh, and as you can see, it has a wireframe over top of the shaded model, as well as uh, some lights in the scene here. Okay, so we're going to be going for this kind of look, and uh, this is a pretty useful thing to do to sh kind of showcase your model, or at least uh, how it was built, uh, by showing the wireframe over top of it here. And a lot of people have asked how to render these out. Okay, so we're going to go over this right now. And it's actually a really simple thing to do. And depending on what render you're using, uh, there's actually quite a few different options to uh, kind of achieve this look. All right, so we'll just start with the basic stuff here. Uh, I just have a really simple scene with just a couple of simple objects. Also just have a regular standard uh, 128 gray shader applied to everything. Way to do just a really basic wireframe render without the shaded model uh, is just to go into the render dialog, which you can do by opening this uh, button here, or just hitting F10. All right, and we just have the standard scanline renderer here set up. Everything's at the defaults right now. All right, so if you go over here into the rendering tab, uh, you'll notice that there's a box here called Force Wireframe. So just by checking that off and hitting Render, we'll get a basic wireframe render. And the color of this will be controlled uh, directly by our material here in the uh, material editor that we have assigned to these objects. So by changing the color here, it'll change the color of the wireframe. All right, so let's just reset that maybe. And I'm just gonna reapply that. Okay. And if you take another look at the render here, you can see it really doesn't look that good. We're also only seeing the front facing faces here of these uh, polygons. All right, we can't see anything on the back side through the objects here. Most of the time you probably really wouldn't want to do that just because uh, it'll look really messy if you have all the back wires showing through. Okay, but if you did want to do that for a particular reason, you can do that by just going back into the material editor and just checking off two-sided here for your material that's assigned. Okay, and if we render again, you can see now we can see the backside uh, wire, wires here. All right, so just rendering the uh, inside and outside of all these polygons. And you can see it looks really messy down here where we can see through it. Okay, so that's useful for some things, but it's really not a good option if you want to just show off your model. Okay, so we'll look at another way to do this. And I'm actually just going to throw a couple of different colors on some of these objects just so it looks a little bit better. All right, I just have uh, the diffuse color changed for these. Uh, nothing else has changed. So one of the common techniques to uh, kind of set this up would be to actually clone each of these objects. All right, so we're going to do here is grab the box and let's actually grab all four objects here for a second and we want to create a clone of these so I'm going to go up to edit and down to clone we're going to choose copy and we're going to hit OK all right and we want to make sure that they're in the exact location uh, of the other ones so what I'm going to do is select the clone of the box here box 2 and I'm going to add a push modifier to this okay so we'll go down and we'll find a push modifier here and what this does is it just kind of extrudes the surface uh, outward or pushes the entire model out, all the faces of it. What we'll do here is set this to a really low amount. We'll do like 0.1. Okay, so it's just very slightly bigger than the uh, copy that's underneath it. And let's also maybe just copy this modifier here. So I'm going to right click and copy that. And we'll just paste that on to the other copies that we have here. All right, so it's going to select cylinder 2 which I also have turbo smooth here, and we'll just paste the push right above it. And we'll do that for the other two as well. Right, so we'll select the copy of the sphere there, paste this in, as well as the small sphere, and we'll paste that in on the copies. So now we have a push modifier applied to all of our copies here. And if we render right now, it's uh, still set up as wireframe, so we're gonna get rid of that. Let's go back into the uh, render dialog here, and we'll uncheck force wireframe, so it renders normally. And it's gonna look exactly the same because uh, these objects are pretty much uh, identical in size. All right, so to get the wireframe actually showing up over top of all these objects here, we're going to go back into the material editor. We're going to grab a new slot here, and I'm going to go down and I'm going to check off wire here. And you can see that'll make this material a wireframe material. And the diffuse color here will control the color of that wire. So what I'm going to do here is make it straight black. Right. And we won't need, uh, need to adjust any of the settings, we're just going to leave this all the defaults. Okay, we'll close that. I'm just going to hit H here and select all those copies we made. Okay, all four copies. Select those, and we'll apply the wire material to them. 
And if I turn off my edges here in the viewport, you can see that it still has the wire on it. And if we do a render now, you can see that we have the wireframe over top. All right. So what's actually happening here is our clones are actually rendering as uh, wireframe geometry now. And the original shape uh, or faces for it are gone. Okay, so we actually just have the wire uh, rendering as a solid object, just like if you modeled it out of splines or something like that. And let's go back into material editor for a second. And obviously you can just change the fuse color here to uh, swap out the wire color, like I mentioned before. And it'll also uh, be responsive to uh, things like self-illumination and lighting in the scene. Okay, so you pop up the self-illumination there, you can see that'll uh, illuminate all the wireframes. So let's maybe uh, take this back to black. And we'll take that back down to uh, zero. So that's one technique for doing this. And uh, this is a pretty good one. I use this all the time. Uh, most times I use this technique to uh, do these kind of renders. And this one here was rendered out the same way uh, with a clone over top. Okay, and sometimes that's not really uh, a good option if you have a lot of objects. Uh, if you have a couple hundred or even a couple thousand objects in your scene and you want to do a wireframe render, uh, obviously making copies of all those uh, and applying push modifiers really wouldn't probably be a good uh, choice uh, just because it's going to take forever and it's more likely going to crash your scene if it's uh, really heavy on the poly count. Okay, so we'll look at another option here. So we close this and we'll just get rid of those copies. Okay, we really don't need to have those anymore, so I'm just going to delete those out. One of the other options you can use is a, a script to do this. Okay, and there's a, a couple of good ones out there that'll uh, kind of do the same thing. I have one here that I use uh, pretty often. I'm just going to go run script here, and I'm just going to pick this wireframe renderer uh, script, which is a really handy little script that I uh, found a little while ago. Okay, the script is uh, free, and you can download that uh, from this URL here over at the script spot. Right, and it'll actually open up the page there for you. Okay, so here it is here, and you can just freely take this. All right, so you just download it here from uh, the uh, guy's site that authored it. And uh, this is a really good option as well uh, in certain cases. I'll show you what it looks like here. We have a couple of boxes here, and this is uh, pretty self-explanatory. We'll just pick our wire color here. So we'll make that black. We'll just pick an object color here. And let's make that almost white and the background color all right and we can just uh, do maybe a blue here and then we'll hit render all right and if we hit render in the actual render window here okay it's just going to render uh, normally uh, we need to actually press it over here okay and this will be connected to the settings here for size and uh, whatnot okay so we hit render over here it's actually going to render it out using mental ray and it's going to automatically set up the settings for you all right so this is pretty handy and uh, it's also pretty quick to render. All right, and you can see it doesn't support any lighting uh, as far as I know in the scene. So it's kind of going to give you uh, more of a self-illuminated look. Um, so that's an option that I use uh, somewhat frequently. OK, so that's pretty handy and pretty simple to use. So I'd recommend taking that. Uh, it's a good little script to have, see how it's free. Right, so let's close this up. And the next option and the final option for the quick tip here we'll be using V-Ray to uh, render out the wire over top. And you'll have to have the V-Ray renderer to uh, do this part. OK, so what I'm going to do here is open up Material Editor. I'm also going to go into the render uh, menu here. And I'm going to switch my renderer to V-Ray. And I'm going to go over into Material Editor, grab a new slot. And I'm going to make this a V-Ray material. And V-Ray comes with uh, a texture called uh, V-Ray Edge Text here. Okay, I'm going to put this into the Diffuse slot, into the map box. So double click that. All right, you can see here that will give us the wireframe. Uh, similar to the wireframe material, uh, but it will also have the background in there. Okay, so pretty much here what you do is just pick your color here in the swatch, and that will be the wireframe color. And you can also control uh, the thickness of the wires either by pixel or by world units here. All right, so I usually just leave that at 1. The color of the actual uh, objects there, the solid part, would be controlled by just the diffuse slot here. So you can just uh, change that to whatever color you want, and it'll change it in the background there. Let's close this up. Let's grab our objects here and assign that material to them. And now it's applied. All we can do is just hit render here, and it'll render out. And this will look very similar to uh, the push technique. It's a little simpler, you don't have to clone objects and uh, 
screwing around with copies. Uh, so this is a pretty good technique if you have V-Ray. And one thing to keep in mind when you're working with the V-Ray edge texture is occasionally if you have uh, subdivided geometry like this here, uh, it can go a little bit uh, wacky on you. Uh, you can see the wires are a little bit broken here. Uh, and that's a problem I find it has whenever you're using it on a, a turbo smooth or mesh smooth object. Uh, if you're on just a regular object, it's usually fine. Um, so sometimes you can have a bit of a problem with the wire showing up uh, properly on really heavy subdivided uh, objects. And you could also just try uh, increasing or decreasing the wire thickness uh, to get rid of that. So if we go back in here and pop this up to say like uh, three and do it on render, and it'll also make those wires a lot thicker. Right? And you can still see it looks a little broken here. Okay, so you can also take that down below one if you want to do a really thin wire over top. Okay, you can see it looks okay, but in some places it looks a little broken here. All right, so I'd recommend if you can, leaving that at a setting of one. And one thing to note, if you're rendering with V-Ray, uh, it won't support a wire material here, like our one that we have ticked here for wire. You can see this is just solid now. Okay, so you won't be able to render uh, using the push technique with V-Ray. You'll have to use the, a different renderer for that. Okay, so that's a look at how to render a uh, wireframe over top of your model. And I hope you found this somewhat useful. And uh, we'll give it a shot on your model. Thanks for watching.